It's so like I said, it takes a little bit of Slay the Spire, a little bit of Mirror's Edge, aesthetically, obviously, and um, maybe a little bit of XCOM as well. Oh, that felt good. All right, Agent 11. That's that's me. Look at this. I'm ready to fight my boss, I guess. So, we have a number of emerging situations that could do with your skills. Deck select. So this is the 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 deck builder aspect. Um Oh, this is interesting. These lines look very jagged on the edges here. Um, but I have anti-aliasing turned off. We shouldn't see them at all. Anyway. So is it a rogue-like or light? I think it's more of a rogue-like. We will have to see, though. This is our balance deck. Quick strike. Push. Slam. Block. As you can see, it's very heavily combat-focused. Um... Which is what intrigues me the most. I love it when these developers get brand new ideas and uh, take something that was, was successful and that worked, but sort of change it to such a degree that it's a brand new thing. Mission Select. Section 11 Training. Death's Head Biker Gang. The Insiders. Jade Staff. I completi. Com completi? Final mission. Well, let's start with the training. Let's go with that. Oh, he's very happy to be receiving a mission. Report back to me when you've completed training. Absolutely, sir. Will do. Alright, so this is us. We've got 40 health, 50 bucks. Enhancements. Emergency move. Gain an emergency move card at the start of each fight. So this could be some kind of rogue-like element, right? The, the further you progress through the mission, um, the more difficult it gets, but we have, like, extra stuff to use. Bikes in Tight Spaces is a turn-based deck-building fighting game. Okay, so Alt gives us a little bit more information. We've got Health, the attack of the opponent. I'm guessing this is either the number of opponents or the turn that they're going to be taking. So it's like I said, it's a little bit of a, little bit of a few different styles of game, but, but blend it all together. Use the Q and E button to rotate your view. Interesting. Use the mouse to highlight cards in your hand and pull it, press the left mouse button to select spinning back fist. Deal 10 damage and draw two cards. Oh, that's a nice card. Range two, maintain distance. Okay. Some cards require momentum to play. You can see this indicated the top right of the card. If a card cannot be played, its momentum cost will be shown in red. Okay, so we currently have one momentum left. And it looks like we get three at the start of every fight. Okay, yep. Your current momentum is shown here. I just said that. Play Focus to refill Momentum. Gain one Momentum. What an odd card. You play a card for free. Well, I guess by having this in your deck, you're you're sort of foregoing that space for something potentially more damaging or, or whatever else, right? Snoopachu. You just made a streamer's day by gifting a ton of subs? That is dope, man. There's these, there's these people that put out videos on TikTok. I'm heavily into TikTok now. Don't ask me why i am it's great um and there's some people that are like yeah like i want to i want to raid you and and leave your links down below and then 
you know, then they always post these videos like, tonight we're going to raid with X number of people and, and they just record their reaction, which I think is a little bit skeevy to begin with. It's like, it's like those people that film themselves um, helping a homeless person, right? Like, it just... Eh. Just help them. Okay. Your current momentum shown here. Next to it is the amount of momentum you will start with next turn. Oh, I already said that too. Play the focus card to refill. Right. Oh, look at that. He psyched himself up. He did the whole double-fisted uh, thing from Mission Impossible. Now your momentum is higher, you can play the double jump kick card. Okay. So apologies, this is the first time I'm going through the tutorial. You've joined me at the most opportune time, it seems. All right. You have to select your target here and you can rotate the scene if you need to. So it takes, like I said, it takes a little bit of Slay the Spire, a little bit of Mirror's Edge aesthetically, obviously, and um, maybe a little bit of XCOM as well. Oh, that felt good. If an opponent is pushed out of the fight, they're knocked out immediately. Enemies can be pushed over railings or anywhere you see a hazard. <laughs> Use the push card to dispatch your adversary now, and that's... Uh, no cost card as well. <laughs> Game of the year, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you will sometimes be given a warning where and when new enemies will arrive. Look for this marker. If the tile is blocked at the end of the turn, the enemy will be prevented from arriving until the following turn. Interesting. So I wonder if we can step in that. Press enter to finish your turn. Every time you make a successful attack, your combo level will increase. Combo is maintained between turns. Oh, and interestingly, push counted. That's something we should definitely uh, keep in the back of our minds. Some cards require a specific combo level before they can be played. So for example, left spin kick. Okay. Movement will reduce your combo level by one for each tile of movement. Use the step card to move in front of the enemy. Okay, so we've got a four combo right now that should drop to three, no doubt. Hopefully turning doesn't affect us as well. Oh, I have to play a card to move. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, sure enough. Your combo level has dropped, but you still have enough to attack. Oh, and that pushed him as well. Dope. I think this is going to get very complex very quickly. Once an enemy has been activated, they will attack at the end of turn, regardless of the allegiance to the target. Oh, I see what we just did. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Press and hold the alt button at any time to see the current health of all the enemies on the board. So we have 40, that new guy that showed up is 25, and then the one that's shooting is 20. An enemy's info panel will also show the order in which they will attack on their next turn. That's really cool. I did deduce all of this stuff that we're currently going through right now just from the interface, and that's like as a as not really a player of strategy slash um, uh, deck builders, that's really, really cool that I, I picked that up beforehand. Uh, if you see the fist icon in the enemy's info panel, it means they are currently primed to attack on their turn. Ah, so we need to GTFO here. Do you know what? I've I've played Into the Breach once and it I didn't last with it. Um I was I was so into it already before even playing it because of FTL, but then I started playing it and I 
I just had to pull back. It, it wasn't really my jam, but I've watched other people play it and thoroughly enjoyed those, those streams, those sessions. Some cards have an alternate movement amount. Use the option play card to move close to the enemies. Option play. Attack for six or move two tiles. Interesting. Okay. So we want to move here. That seems dangerous. This costs one to play, which will leave us with two. Okay. Let's see what this tutorial has set up for us. Cards like Head Smash can be used only when the target is adjacent to a wall or barrier. Note that some cards like Head Smash will cause an enemy to face you, so they will attack you if they survive the attack. Head Smash. Slam the target into an adjacent wall, edge, or object. Deal 12 damage plus 1 per combo count. Target will turn to face attacker. And it will end the combo as well. Okay. Wait, it's getting me to attack the other guy? Not the guy that's shooting. Uh, oh, actually, we can't even kill him anyway, so... Okay, we're going to take a hit here. Oh, okay. Sometimes you'll have to take a hit. Any damage done will be taken from your block before your health. Play the block card now. That'll give us 10 block. Okay. You're the boss. Ow. Yeah, that cost us a lot. Any leftover block is usually lost at the end of the turn. Okay. So that's very similar to what we're used to from other cards. Some cards, like Grapple, require you to first select the target, play the card, and select the enemy. Move enemy to an adjacent tile. Target will turn to face away. Got it. Now finish the fight using the information you've learned. Okay, well, the first thing I would like to do... Let's have a look. We can gain a momentum back. Deal 8 damage and 1 push. Move forward 1 tile. I kind of want to get out of the way. Or move him, I guess. Shift. Move past the target or move 2. That might be the play right there. Left spin kick. That one we can't do because we need combo for that. All right, let's do shift, see what happens. I'm going to move over here. Here we go. Deal eight damage and one push. Okay, I'm good with that. End turn. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't realize, obviously, the guy was going to try to hit us, uh, the punch, but he got, he got taken out. It's okay. All right, so we have a head smash, which I would definitely like to use. That's very entertaining. Spinning back fist. Deal 10 damage and draw 2 cards. Range 2. Maintain distance. What we want to do is push this guy back and follow up if we can. Push the enemy one tile. Oh yeah! Why is the enemy bearded? I guess some enemies are just bearded. That's fine. <laughs> Move one tile in any direction. Double jump kick. 
Deals eight damage twice and advances. Oh, I like that. That costs two. We can do that. Oh, hold up. No. Okay, so the range on this one is two. So we need to be away from this dude. Okay. Push first. Costs nothing. Double jump kick. Head smash. Nice. Impressive stuff. You've clearly still got it. Clearly. Did you ever have any doubts? Well, this is McQueeb we're talking about here. The world moves on Agent 11. New challenges, new threats. I'm just glad you're up to it. Okay. Training is, is completed. Next mission. Death's Head Biker Gang. With a network of clandestine clubhouses throughout Northern Europe and thousands of members, the Death's Head Biker Gang. I'm going to read it like that every time.